you do possess it, to possess the land that you've walked on in, the, in these realms of the activities of the gifts of the Spirit. And again, don't allow anyone to intimidate you. Listen only for the voice of the Lord and hearken to his voice and demonstrate at his unction or command. These are the secrets. These are the ingredients to a successful ministry. Knowing these things, understanding these things, being able to exact these things, being able to work in the realm of the Spirit, trusting in your contact with God, not being discouraged by others, no matter what other people say or do not say. You carry on with authority and confidence in your contact with God and the Spirit of the Lord that is in your life and that rests upon you. God will help you. I promise you, God will help you. Based upon what I have just said, you can probably understand this statement. In my travels as an evangelist over this country and out of this country of America, I can only do, I can only give what the local congregation is able to receive. I'm able to ascertain through the gifts of the Spirit. I'm able to determine by the help of God what a congregation is able to receive, what they are able to do, how much of this miraculous power they're able to handle. When I determine how much they can receive, that is how much I'm able to give. You cannot give to people more than they are able to receive. However, in some places, I am also able, by the help of God, to lead the whole congregation into a much higher level of spiritual activity, into a greater and higher realm of the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. One of the reasons this is, this is possible in this hour is because pastors <clears throat> all over this country are beginning to understand that we are beyond the days of mediocre services. We are beyond the days of just a mental just a, a mental, intellectual exegesis. That we've got to have something more than religion. That we must have a real move of the Spirit of God because the forces of evil are becoming greater and greater. The hour is becoming darker and darker and perilous times are not coming. Perilous times are here and people are beginning to lose out with God. They're beginning to backslide and just the regular, normal, cut and dried religious service is no longer enough. It's not enough. There must be a move of God. There must be a demonstration. There must be a touch of deliverance. For example, for further clarity perhaps, let me say it this way. We can't afford anywhere in our movement in the United Pentecostal Church to have one bad service Every service we come to must be enhanced, laced throughout with the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Every time we come to church, something has got to happen. It is the will of God when we come to church for there to be a move of the Spirit. Where two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus, there He is in their midst or our midst. And where Jesus is, anything can happen. Anything can happen in the presence of the Lord. Nothing shall be impossible to those that believe. But we must allow the free operation of the gifts of the Spirit. We must make place for the Holy Ghost to operate. We must have church. We cannot just play church. We must have church. Someone has got to repent. Someone has got to turn from sin. Someone in a service has got to weep. Someone has got to shout. Someone has got to dance. Someone has got to become broken. Someone has got to weep. Someone needs to get baptized. Someone needs to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Someone must get healed. If we come to church and go through the motions of, and the format of just a religious service uh, and none of these things I have just mentioned happened, of what value really is it? Because it is the will of God every time we come together Every time we come together, Jesus has something to tell us, something to say from His Word, from the manifestation of His Spirit, from the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. It is the will of the Lord, the will of God for us to be not just another religion that joins the rank and the critique of religiosity, 
but that we become a real Book of Acts revivalistic penetrating group of people called the Church of the Living God that will march through this world with demonstration not just a mental religion but an actual demonstration of the power of this resurrected one whose name is Jesus God help us in this hour to do exactly what the Holy Ghost wants us to do Jesus is the head signals are coming from the head to the body signals are coming from Jesus he is beginning to nudge us he's beginning to urge us the unction is beginning to touch us in all aspects of our lives in these hours these closing hours of time he is beginning to help us to try to hear his voice God help us to hear his voice and to carry on exactly as he would want us to carry on we don't need another religion we need the real true church of Jesus Christ in this hour operating full steam ahead for the cause of the furtherance of the gospel now we are leaving the utterance gifts and I want to proceed now to the category of the gifts that have to do with action the action gifts the power gifts and before we actually begin to get into each of these three gifts separately and begin to talk about them at least in part uh, one from another I want to just begin now to talk to you about faith Hebrews chapter 10 in verse 23 says hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised the Bible says faith in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and then it also says in verse 6 without faith it is impossible to please God for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him faith faith is the most necessary ingredient in our Christian walk and Christian activities without faith it's impossible to please God without faith it's impossible to carry on we must have faith I have come to believe that our approach to God our approach to him has everything to do with everything it behooves us in this hour in the face of opposition to be as positive as we possibly can whether we understand the circumstances whether we understand the battles or the trials it is the will of God for us to place it all in the hands of the Lord and to be positive in our thinking toward God positive thinking is a kind of mental faith it's no substitute for biblical faith or the gift of faith which is God's faith but it is a step in the right direction positiveness is just a wonderful thing the three Hebrew children that were thrown into the fiery furnace in the book of Daniel their attitude their approach unto the dilemma was the thing that caused them to be wonderfully delivered in the end result faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen what could that possibly mean what does the Bible mean when it says faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen let me explain have you ever have you ever been in your own prayer chamber or your prayer closet perhaps at an altar perhaps on a pew in a service or wherever in a car in your own private retreat and you've been praying and suddenly as you begin to pray the face of a loved one or a neighbor or a friend comes before you you may be in the dark of the night with all the lights turned off but yet in the theater of your mind's eye it's like lights come on it's like curtains draw back and you see before your eyes that friend or relative or neighbor or loved one you see them you've been praying for them for maybe months and all of a sudden in this prayer meeting 
You can see that individual walking down an aisle. You can see them weeping.